Here's what Democrats can do to stop Trump's Supreme Court nominee. Not much. If you have a plan, post it now in the comments, but the hard numbers are that there are 49 Democrats and independents in the Senate, and there are 51 Republicans. And according to multiple constitutional scholars, 51 is more than 49. I hear a lot of people saying, the Democrats just need to get tough. But let's be clear, this isn't about toughness, it's about math. Even if every single Democrat and independent votes no, Trump's pick will be confirmed. Unless some Republicans also vote no. That's not likely, but it's not impossible. Which is why everybody's looking at Senator Susan Collins of Maine and Senator Lisa Murkowski of Alaska. Now, Senator Collins specifically said she would vote against a justice who would overturn Roe versus Wade. So that's good news for women's rights, right? Given the president's comments, is it fair to expect that any nominee he selects will vote to overturn Roe versus Wade? Well, the president told me in our meeting that he would not ask that question. Senator Collins, come on! He doesn't have to ask that question. His list of choices was compiled by the Federalist Society and the Heritage Foundation. If they didn't want to overturn Roe versus Wade, they wouldn't have been on the list. And we've already seen Senator Collins get played by her party before. She voted to repeal Obamacare's individual mandate on the sole condition that Mitch McConnell would bring a bipartisan bill to the floor that would lower insurance costs. After she kept her end of the bargain, what did McConnell do? Catch you on the flip, suckers! But if Collins or Murkowski does vote no, then it's a tie, right? 50-50. Wrong. In the case of a tie, the vice president casts the deciding vote. Does anybody know where Mike Pence stands on a far-right judge who'd overturn Roe versus Wade? I believe we will see Roe versus Wade consigned to the ash heap of history where it belongs. Okay, so that settles that. So to beat this nominee, it would take every Democrat and Independent and at least two Republicans, or one Republican if John McCain is unable to vote. But we can't assume that every Democrat is a no vote. The Democratic Party isn't the Borg. Senators have individual minds and opinions. Senators Joe Donnelly, Heidi Heitkamp, and Joe Manchin all voted for Trump's pick last time, and they could do so again. It's rare for a Supreme Court nominee to get voted down. It hasn't happened since 1987. This is one of the biggest reasons why presidential elections are about more than just four years. But Alan, you say, can't Democrats just do what Republicans did with Merrick Garland? No! The historically unprecedented action of refusing to hold any hearings on Merrick Garland for almost a year was only possible because Republicans controlled the Senate, which, in case you missed it, they still do. But what if Democrats delay the vote until after the election? How? By appealing to Mitch McConnell's sense of fairness? Because that's not a thing. Even if this nominee is rejected, President Trump will then select a different nominee. Barring something truly extraordinary, this Supreme Court vacancy will be filled by a Trump appointee. And here's where it's important not to learn the wrong lesson. If you voted for a Democrat and Democrats fail to stop this nominee, it will be tempting to say, see, it doesn't matter who I voted for. But the truth is the exact opposite. Trump is appointing his second Supreme Court justice because voters handed Republicans the Senate in 2014 and the White House in 2016. This year, control of the Senate is up for grabs again. And as we've established, 51 is more than 49, but not by much. Republicans will decide who fills this Supreme Court seat, but which party controls the vote on the next Supreme Court seat is entirely up to you.